Hello everyone, today we're going to be setting up Search Kick and more importantly, Elasticsearch in this Rails application. Now unfortunately, because Elasticsearch happens outside of Rails, the setup's going to be a little bit messy. Uh, and I chose the extra hard mode, I'm going to be running this off of WSL on Windows, so there's an extra step we're going to have to take, because of course there is. Uh, the basic idea is you add the search kick gem, you add the elastic search gem, and then you're probably going to spend 20 minutes hating your life. But we can go ahead and get started with that. I'm going to CD out of my uh, demo app and CD into a Rails new video app. Uh, the only thing we have to do over here right now in the elastic search github repo i'll have a link to all these resources in the video description uh, because there's going to be some commands we have to run that i can't explain uh, but i'll have links to them down below uh, the only commands we have to run are the gem for search kick and then your choice between elastic search or open search ruby uh, i feel like most people probably end up going with elastic search i'm going to do a code dot to open this up in vs code real quick um, but the other thing you can do besides adding these to your gem file is you can of course run the bundle add command and then you're just going to run this for the search kick gem and you're going to run this for the elastic search gem. That'll add it to your gem file at the bottom and then it'll run the bundle install automatically. And then once that's done, we can uh, do the elastic search stuff. So there is a DigitalOcean article published on April 25th. Uh, this is going to be using some uh, you know, Ubuntu, Ubuntu commands. Uh, so anytime you have a Linux command where you're adding some sort of GPG key or anything like that, there's a good chance that the command will be outdated by the time you watch the video. Uh, I'll have a gist, I guess, with these commands specifically. Uh, but if the if any of these commands don't work, you might have to look for these specific uh, install instructions somewhere else that's maybe a bit more updated. I'm gonna go ahead and run the command to add the uh, GPG keys. I'm then going to run, oops, I'm going to put in my sudo password. I'm then going to run the command to, uh, I don't know, add the source list or whatever it's doing here. Don't really read a lot, so I wouldn't know. Uh, you can then run the uh, sudo apt update command, and hopefully that'll work for you. It'll just update a lot of your packages, and then you should be good to finally run the sudo apt install elastic search command. Now, in my case, it's already installed. Once you install it, you're then going to have to configure a specific file, which is going to be the, oops, you're going to have to edit the Elasticsearch, Elasticsearch.yaml file. So we can go ahead and do that. And in here, uh, it says to change one line, but actually there's gonna be two lines you're gonna need to change. At least in my case, there were two that you have to change. Uh, these are going to be down here under the network section. Now, I haven't tried it with these commented out. I just uh, made sure they were enabled so that I knew which, uh, which host I was using. You uncomment the network host and you change the, uh, the setting from like 0.0.0.0, .0 to local host. You then come down one more level, uncomment the http.port line and set it to 9200, which I think is its default. After you have that done, you can then try to start this, but you're going to run into an additional issue, which is if you're on Windows specifically, when you try to do the system control start, it'll throw back an error that says uh, the, the host bus isn't enabled or whatever. And in that case, you have to go to this link, which I'll have in the video description, uh, where they tell you to change your settings for the WSL.conf. Now, I think they have two different sections, one for the WSL config, which is specifically for WSL2, and another one for the WSL.conf. And I know there's going to be people in the video description that are going to be like, lol, this is why I use Linux. Nobody cares. Uh, if you're using WSL, this is what you have to do. Uh, scroll down until you find it. Uh, it's going to be in your slash etc slash WSL.conf. So we can do a sudo nano slash etc slash wsl.conf. There's a good chance yours will be empty just like mine was. You just add these two lines to it, hit control O, enter control X to exit, and then you're gonna be good. After you have that done, you should be good to try starting your Elasticsearch service again. So you can do your sudo system control start Elasticsearch. 
But if you start it, you might go to localhost port 9200 and you might run into an additional issue where if you run this, it comes back with no information. If that's the case for you, you then need to do this link solution, which is a stack exchange answer where they were running into the same problem. You need to go back into your Elastic Search uh, config. So you're in a pseudo nano slash etc slash Elastic Search slash Elastic Search dot yaml. You're going to have to come in here and go down to the security section, wherever that is, right here. And the xpack.security.enabled is going to be set to true. And you're going to have to change this to false. Once you have that done, you should then be good to try to restart your Elastic Search service. This will take a couple seconds, and once it's finally done, you'll then be able to come over here, refresh the page, and hopefully uh, you'll see this pop from the site can't be reached to the actual Elasticsearch default result. Just like that, you might have different information, but hopefully it'll look something similar to this. And at this point, you should be good to actually use this stupid thing. I know it's a lot of setup, Unfortunately, that's just the way it works. Uh, you might have to follow some different steps. These are the steps that work for me though on, on WSL. So at this point, you're then good to like, you know, start doing whatever you'd like to. So for our demo application, we're gonna create a search bar. Uh, so what we can do is just add something to search. We'll say Rails G scaffold, we'll call them posts, give each post a title and a body of type text, right? Go ahead and run that. We can then do a Rails DB colon migrate command, and then we can do a Rails S to start our server. Uh, we can then come in here, I'll hit Control plus a couple times, and I'll hit F11. We can come into our config and our routes.rb. Inside of our routes.rb, we'll do a route to the post controller index action, and I'll move this up one. The other thing I wanna do is do a get for uh, search maybe, and we'll set this to a uh, search controller, I guess, which we have to make and we'll give it a search action, right? So we can come into our app, our controllers, and we can right click our controller, new file, call it search underscore controller maybe, dot rb, give it a class, call it the search controller class, inherit from application controller, do a def uh, search action, sch, yep, there we go, okay, and and then end down here. Now inside of the search action is where we'll do the actual magic, but first we have to actually create the search bar. So to do that, we can come into our views, our posts, and our post index. Now the first thing I wanna do in here is grab all of these posts, uh, we'll cut them, and then we'll render a partial, which will be posts slash posts. We can then pass in our posts from our at posts variable. Just to clean this up a little bit, you'll see why in a second. We can then right click on our posts folder, create a underscore posts plural dot html dot erb. And inside of that post file, we just paste in that code. The reason why we're doing this is we're gonna be responding with a turbo stream. So we're gonna be using a Rails 7 feature. Turbo allows us to refresh the page or refresh contents in the page without having to reload. So that's sort of what we're doing there. Now, if we exit out of here, come over to localhost port 3000 and the root of the app, we'll see the empty post section. So let's create one, I'll say test and case. I'll go back, create another new post. I'll just type some other nonsense in here, like one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe. And that'll give us something to search through. And then we'll create one more that's like apples and oranges, right? Create posts, there we go. So we have three to search through and uh, maybe, well, I guess we can probably test this with like one more that has the same information so we get duplicates. Okay, so we have four four results here, right? Now we're rendering all of these. Let's go ahead and let's try to render this form. I'm gonna hit Control B to hide the side panel in VS Code. If we come down here, we can do a form with form underscore with for the uh, URL, which is oops URL, which is going to be the search path with a method colon colon get do form. Let me hit F11. And this is going to be not a text field. I don't know what Copilot's doing here. Uh, it's clearly not going to be taking our jobs anytime soon. We're gonna do a label for the search, and then we're gonna do one more that's going to be a form.text underscore field for the search. 
We then have our actual submit button and we can do a percent end. Now, if we come over here and we refresh, we have the search bar, but if we type some stuff in here, nothing's going to happen. We're gonna get an error in our console. If we come over to the search controller, we have to actually tell it what to do. Now, if we come to the search kick page, it tells us the first step, we have to add search kick to our model. So let's come over to our models directory, our post.rb, and in this, we want to paste in search kick. Now, after we have that, we can refresh, do a one, two, three, four, nothing will happen yet. Why? Well, in our search controller, we're still not doing anything. They do explain how to do this. They say you just grab the products in this case by calling product.search. So what we wanna do is we wanna have some results and set this equal to, in our case, it's gonna be the post.search. And we want to search by the params and this is going to be for the search parameter, not the query parameter like Copilot thinks. After we have this, we can then refresh and we'll try test. Now, if we look at our actual terminal here, let me hit enter a couple times. If we search for test, uh, what happens is if I scroll up, it tells us we're missing an exact template. It's trying to return text slash HTML. I forgot to mention this during the video, I'm just going through and editing right now, but uh, one thing you are gonna have to do is run a re-index. You might notice it during the video, I don't catch it, but if you type like one, two, three, in your case, it'll probably error. In my case, during the video, I think typing one, two, three was also causing the apples and oranges to appear for some reason. Uh, and the reason being I had to re-index, I didn't realize it, it was still indexed from the demo app. So the way to do this is you just stop your server, open up a Rails C, and then in there you're going to run a, let me see if I can find it, it should be like product.reindex. So you're gonna run a post.reindex. And you shouldn't have to do this every time, it's just a matter of doing it uh, whenever the uh, stuff is out of date. So if we come back in here and we do a Rails S, uh, you should see that if we do like a new post, ASDF, uh, 888, create post, come back here. If we type like one, two, three, in my case, it'll work. In your case, it should hopefully work. Uh, and now you can search for that ASDF. Uh, it just, the initial set, because we created those prior to implementing the search kick, those were not indexed. So those were causing some errors. So it's just something to watch out for that you do need to re-index. I just missed it in the video. Sorry about that. I'll let you get back to the tutorial. Well, so we have to actually return something. What do we return? Well, first of all, why do we have to return? Because it's a get method. Like what's it gonna get? Right now it's not getting anything. So it's a little bit upset with us. What we wanna return though is a render for a turbo stream. And inside of the, oops, inside of this turbo stream, we wanna do a turbo underscore stream dot update. And we're going to update the posts. Now we can update these because in our index section right here, we have a div with an ID of post. So this is what we're targeting and we're going to update the contents of it. You can see right here, we're rendering the posts partial with the posts local variables being passed into it. So that now that we've refactored it like that, we can come in here and we can say this needs to have a partial, which is going to be the posts slash post partial. And then it's going to have some locals where the posts are gonna be set to the results. In this case, we're only doing the results for the posts because it's a search bar in the posts section. If you wanted it to be like multiple types of models, you would have to refactor your search page uh, to not be like this post page right here. It'd have to be like at results.each do result. And then you'd have to render the specific or the like generalized um, result where you maybe say like if it's one type of model render that partial etc in this case it's only one so we don't have any of this advanced logic that we have to deal with but just by doing this render turbo stream if we now come over here and we refresh the page we can do a search for test and you can see that we get an error now what's what's the issue here well our at posts is now the local variable if we come into the uh, post partial this was still working initially because it was getting at posts assigned by the posts controller. Now it no longer does, so we have to get rid of that at. If we now refresh, type test and hit search, you can see that test appears here. That's really cool. It's now working, right? 
Well, not entirely. If we type one, two, three, that's also working. But if we just return an empty query, it's not returning anything. Debatably, that could be what you would like. Maybe you just render like zero, zero results found or whatever. In our case, maybe we want it to return everything if there is no result found. Well, we can come in here and we can just say at results is going to be equal to post dot search and you pass in an asterisk if params dot search or param search dot blank. So if our search params are blank, then we just return all of our results. If we now come in here and type test search, we can then backspace out of this, hit enter, and we get all of those results back. It really depends on how you want this implemented. If, uh, if the search bar is empty, personally, I just prefer to return all results as a user. Uh, I prefer this because sometimes like I, you know, I do too specific of a search and I just want to get back to whatever I was looking at so I can start over. I know there's other people that are like, if, if it's blank, it should just be an empty page. Um, I, I really don't know what the right answer is, but uh, the important thing is we do now have search kick working in an application. We do have the turbo search results uh, with elastic search in the background and elastic search at least uh, seems to be working as expected now, thankfully. So yeah, hopefully this was interesting. Hopefully it was helpful because this was a pain to figure out uh, and hopefully I will see you in the next video.